On May 1st, at 10 a.m., the United States President Grover Cleveland, for the first time in history, pressed the red button, which set in motion all electrically powered wonders of the Columbian Exhibition, the largest, the most spectacular, the most peculiar World Fair held in Chicago, USA in 1893. The fair had quite a few purposes. First, in the commemoration of Columbus setting foot on this land exactly 400 years ago, on 1492. The exhibition was one year late for the date, but sheer volume of the construction, as you can see, explains and forgives the delay. No one was mad about it. And the second purpose is to show the world the achievements the United States had accomplished as an agrarian country back then, just turning into industrialized and urbanized society just three decades later, after the Civil War has ended in 1865. This fair basically is to let the world know that America is the new developed nation which the rest of the world should respect and regard from now on. Even though any exhibition is a kind of bit of competition among each participant, but this expo was about the world's unity and friendship and how people can peacefully coexist with each other and even collaborate and be productive. 1885 is when the exhibition idea hit the Congress. Hundreds of architects were hired by Charles Walker, the director of the fair. Hundreds of curious locals were taking an occasional walk along the exhibition construction site for small admission fee of 25 cents, witnessing every bit of progress made daily. When I started scripting this episode, I was 50-50 on the verge of believing a conspiracy version about buildings being dug out of the mud after the flood or, as they call it, a Tartarian legacy. But after researching through hundreds of frescoes and photos and looking at the blueprints, material purchasing orders, thousands upon thousands looking for a job Chicagoans employed overnight, at the World's Fair construction, it all began slowly but surely to make sense. Even though the construction started at April 1890, the Congress has been developing the idea since 1885. So it's five years of preparation, three years of construction with help of tens of thousands of workers, and all the brilliant minds in the world to the rescue. So there was a sufficient time to get prepared and ready for the buildings to start rising. It was the time when Europe has its own industrialization race, especially between England and France. Subsequently, the Eiffel Tower was built for the same purpose of showing off at the Expo in 1889 in Paris. In other words, America jumped in on a train of competition among developing and developed nations. Same as later the arms race between the USA and USSR, it was imperative to show who is the boss same here, after Eiffel Tower, we had to surpass them and astonish everybody. And there you go, when I see and feel the healthy competition, facts talk for themselves. Plus, the city of Chicago even made a little unexpected profit. Nobody thought that half of the US population would visit. 27 million people showed up and paid full admission price of 50 cents. Electricity was proudly set up by Tesla himself as Westinghouse Corporation, for which he worked at that time, won the bid for eliminating the Chicago World's Fair with AC current. All the illumination, electrically powered walkways and other invented machines had wiring set up on the boardwalks and neatly concealed, which gave off magical appearance. 160,000 light bulbs lit up the evening sky over Chicago. They named it the City of Lights. The fair was run on 12 1000 horsepower AC generators of Tesla's design. Even though electrical was all safe, the fair was under fire for other reasons twice during six months exhibition time. It wasn't the first time exhibitions like that were caught on fire, therefore for the priceless art collection that was sent from all over the world to exhibit an expo only to be displayed in fireproof facilities as per insurance requirement. Only a couple of buildings, Palace of Fine Arts and the World Congress Auxiliary Building were brick built to hold the art displays. Those buildings are still standing to this day. So were any of those buildings there before 
were kind of repurposed into the exhibition. We may speculate that there could have been foundations left from previous civilizations which helped to speed up the construction process. And for that reason, Daniel Burnham, the main architect of the fair, proposed the construction site in the middle of nowhere in Jackson Park. It was founded 20 years prior in the 1870s, situated 7 miles away from Chicago downtown in swamps and very uninviting environment. I could not find any suggestions that there were buildings or ancient ruins there. There definitely were sites along Lake Michigan closer to the city and way more appealing, unless it was a known location of recently unearthed foundations or something upon which the fair could have been constructed, it is hard to understand why the location was chosen. While with a little land acclimation and digging for a few thousand unskilled workers would be a piece of cake if it was for a reason. Photos could have been removed, narrative could have been changed. I will keep digging and hope I'll find definitive proof of superior civilization existence soon.